How you doing out there? Welcome in again. Another segment of your nights, your urban nighttime talk. It's your boy Biggs, the co-host out the hood bar, and opinion straight out the projects. Mook. It's only right that I give the hood perspective is your boy Mook. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's Section 8, Project Housing, I got you. Back to Vaughn. Hi, good afternoon. Today we would like to discuss issues that really touch our urban communities. And with the panel opening up about education, police violence, our youth, we really need to distinguish what really is going on in our world today. I'd like to introduce Mooch, a product of his environment, who knows today's news about what's going on in the urban community. Well, thank you, Vaughn. Um, you know, even though you got my name wrong, but I still love you. Uh, Mook, um, today's topic, I really like, you know, that really hit my heart because that's in my neighborhood, my hood that I grew up, the Bronx, if you don't know. And uh, yesterday, a child was apprehended by NYPD because of he stole five dollars like what happened to school delegating responsibilities and reaching out to the parents so i don't understand like what is going on so i, I that's why i had to i had to come on this segment and bring that up today well, i had to well excuse me Mook, i'm sorry yes. to interrupt you do you feel that the police serve a justice within our community or an injustice is i mean no, like for for matters of that, like come on, he's he's seven years old. Right. Like, what do you what what do you what is he gonna tell you? I mean, you overall know? of their uh, whole experience yeah. of them just being a part of everyday life and culture, do you feel like they're a justice to our neighborhoods? Or I mean, what kind? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I know that's not justice because you know, like growing up, I know that. When you did something wrong, like your parents is reached first and then, you know, y'all work things out. But going to like the government and city, I think that's taking it a little bit further than it needs to be. So what, so, could, be, what could be done to help these kids? Right. What could be done is just explain, you know, the magnitude of the situation. Let them know that uh, like there's other ways, like let them know, first of all, that there's consequences and that it can, you can be apprehended but it should not go that far. Like, you know, they, they need to be aware of, it can go that far, but at the same time, principals, counselors, teachers, like, you know, they need to have more of a communication between them. Do you feel that uh, the police are abusing their authority in the community? Definitely, definitely. The other, the other day, uh, 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 nice young, a nice young lady came up to me and was expressing her thoughts about the watchtower because we have a, a few watchtowers in the neighborhood and um, a cop was saying that he's in the community here for you and everything. And as you know, growing up in the hood, like watchtowers is not gonna solve to crimes. Watch a watchtower for people who don't know is a device that they have like set up in the castle or like you know up top where there's camera surveillance to monitor the neighborhood 24 hours a day. But as we all know that crime is gonna happen regardless, but watchtowers is just like a man in a booth for like 24 hours and it's only 10 officer. and it's yeah it's, it's during a duration of like i would say like you know how for however long they you know stay there but it's only temporarily so well i would like to add a little insight on this topic i feel the police is doing a magnificent job in order to keep up with these criminals of today we have to stay on top of things and i feel like new york city as a whole is going in the right direction we can't satisfy everybody and make everyone happy but I just hope at the end of the day, we'll do what's right for the people in their communities. Who's policing the police? And how do you feel about the stop and frisk? Oh man, the stop and frisk. I think I've been subjected to the stop and frisk at, at least 11 times or better. It's just, I don't understand. Like if you're a detective and you're doing your job, you should know who the criminals are in the neighborhood. Don't keep harassing the people that's doing what they have to do, the regular nine to five grind, hard working people getting harassed for no reason. I don't understand. Like, okay, well, we have a little bit of time left. Uh, we wanna ask you now the final question. What is the hottest topic in your hood? 
Hottest topic right now, man. They talk about the Super Bowl right now. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you. The Super Bowl is bumping right now. Um, I guess you know that gives everybody a little break right now. You know what I'm saying? Besides the, you know, the child being surprised not the Yankees. Nah, the Yankees. Oh uh, man, let's not talk about that. Super That's another segment. Yeah. Do you feel that the Super Bowl is a distraction to the urban community as far as their commercials and uh, the, the, the advertisements that they have on to, to subliminally keep people from paying attention to the realities that they're faced with in their world? Absolutely. Like, honestly, I totally agree with you Juan, on that. Um, I believe that we all need, like, some time to get away, but at the same time, like, it's just that every, look who they targeting. They targeting the urban teens and you know like because who's gonna who's really buying this stuff you understand so it's like we don't and and that's why uh kids are obese this is this is why like every commercial is about a fast food chain on there so it's like come on people are distracted and not paying yeah. attention that, to their nutritional needs yeah. and so therefore maybe the children that are coming up are being dumbed down by a society yeah. with the media placing Absolutely. emphasis on the junk food, the rap music, and video games. How do you feel about the video games? Are they too violent? Like I said before, uh, my kindest opinion, I feel everybody has the right to control their own instinct. Uh, if the child is doing wrong, that's what parents are for. If the child is eating wrong, that's what parents are for. If there's problems within the household, if you cannot get counseling, then that's what parents are for. Uh, we like to go to a public service announcement. We'll be right back. It's your man Peppermint Black here, talking about sponsor against drunk driving. So I brought a little song here, so to try to see if I can reach out to the hood. Don't drink that wine, coke would be better, it's easy to find. If they don't do smoke, enjoy the two. Don't drink that wine, don't drink that wine. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, you're beautiful. Anybody got five dollars? <laughs> Am I getting paid for this? Don't drink in your house. Our guest Peppermint back for giving us that PSA about don't drink and drive. Give, give, give it up. Give it up. Please don't From an educational drive. stand view or standpoint, right. we would like to introduce Will. My man. Yeah. Uh, good evening. How you doing, um, Will? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Nice to meet you, yeah. again, brother. Yeah, same here. We have some uh, questions that we want to discuss, if you don't mind. A couple questions. Sure enough. All right, the first question. I know you're not maybe not too familiar with the culture and style of music of today, but can you tell us the five hottest songs in the hood? Okay. Well, Frederick Douglass says, power concedes nothing, but you need a demand on it. Malcolm X says, the price of freedom is death. There's another statement that goes and says as well, if you think the price of education is expensive, try ignorance. So now we go back to the hood. What is the hood? Well, the hood is consists of, it's basically an urban community which consists of people, or such as minorities, Living in project environments or maybe low income households. Section 8, such as? Considered ghetto. Mm hmm. Well, well, ghetto is a term that they usually use with the, with the Jews. The Jews, yes, Hitler. Exactly. Uh huh. So we don't want to put that, that, that mindset on our own people, so to speak. We, we are trying to look for a psychological warfare that counters what the system is trying to do to our youth and to our young ones, to, to tell them that education isn't worthwhile. Okay, so my next question is, mm -hmm. where do you see the future of the youth in the urban community 20, 30 years from now? I don't see it. It's gonna be zero. If we don't stand up and do something at this present time, it will be absolutely zero. There, there won't be no conception of what they call a black mind any longer. Slavery will be in the level of what we deal with mathematics 
on a negative term. We won't even be slaves anymore. We won't even know what slavery means. Talk about slavery, can you tell us five different types of fried chicken? Well, I, I don't even know Kentucky fried. Mm. Kentucky fried? Sounds like a plan. Um, what well, can you name any fried? I want to name Popeyes. Uh, candy. Candy, I candy fried chicken like in the community. I eat the uh, food from the restaurants outside. I like to cook my own food. Last night I had teriyaki chicken. Now, on to other things. Will, mm -hmm. I would like to know from an educational point of view, if you feel that um, that's what the society would be like for minorities in the future, do you feel that there may be some kind of way that the education can help these children, these people, come out of the ghetto? If, if they say knowledge is key, is it? And is it easy well, to obtain? Well, they say we can find it in basketball. They say we can find it in football, we can find it in hip hop, we can find it in dancing, we can, we can Jeff all we want to. We can always be that same entertaining Negro that we've been for 200 and something years. But the mindset, can we grab hold of the mindset that, 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 that brought the enrichment, the enrichment of black people like back in the old kingdom back in Africa. Well, that's, I, I don't think that would be the correct way of actually putting it. For the simple fact that we've already been exploited and we all have chosen to take different paths within this course of life and we don't even accept the fact of our own brothers and sisters making it. Uh, we get jealous easily and we easily, the first thing we do is think of ways to dethrone them of everything they're earning or trying to accomplish in their lifetime. Well, so how can we get past these points or get higher within if we can't even come to common grounds with things of this matter, such as these matters? We will be right back with that answer. We're back with Night Talk, Urban Nighttime Talk Show with uh, Biggs and Will. And we like to discuss issues that are hurting our urban communities, like drug use, drug abuse, and those that we know are functioning addicts. How do you feel, Will, about this going on in our urban community? Uh, deception. Deception. Uh, everybody wants an attitude of altering. We, we, we appreciate when we look at this, uh, thyself in the mirror, we, we want to know thyself. So when we look in the mirror and we don't see thyself, we want to alter it in certain ways. The easiest way to alter it is to use drugs. And then when you look, you look in the mirror and you look at yourself and you say, you know what? I'm not bad looking, even though I'm nodding, even though I look drunk, even though I look unsophisticated. But I'm happy with this because I don't look like what I wanted to look like before. So, so my alternative is I'll go to the, the system and the system tells me in the pharmaceutical world, well take this and they'll alter it and you'll like what you see. And then when you look, when, when they advertise it inside or when you watch the TVs, they'll give you that this drug will help you in a lot of ways. But when they tell you this may have an effect on you, you may die if you use this two times a day. So you'd only have to use it a quarter of the day. And at the same time, they'll say, well, if you have any complications, go to your doctor. <laughs>